Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to reducing power consumption on the Arduino enabled ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. So the reason I say Arduino enabled is because I'm going to be looking at it from the standpoint of an Arduino IDE user. I know there's other development environments and IDEs that support this, but I'm going to be looking at it from an Arduino standpoint. And with that said, let's get started. Okay, whenever you're looking at a microcontroller or a system on a chip like the ESP8266, the first thing you want to do is look what kind of sleep, power save, or standby modes it has. And, and you know, different chips call them different things. But the ESP8266 has three different ones, modem sleep, light sleep, and deep sleep. So modem sleep is interesting because it just turns off the RF portion of the chip, so the Wi-Fi portion. And what's nice about that is if you're just doing communication every once in a while, you're getting data or sending data, and then you're just using the microcontroller to do some type of action, you can use modem sleep to shut off the RF portion, and you can save substantial power there. Now, there's also an automatic function. If the chip's being used a certain way, it automatically uses the modem sleep function. But the manual way is called forced sleep, and you, so you can go into forced modem sleep. Another one is light sleep, as I mentioned. This turns off most things except for the real-time clock and it pauses the CPU. So you can still be woken up and the CPU can continue where it left off. So when you're in manual light sleep mode, you can only be woken up by external interrupts. Also, light sleep isn't really supported much by the Arduino libraries as the time, at the time of this video, so I'm not gonna go into light sleep. I will show an example for modem sleep and also for deep sleep. So what deep sleep does is it turns off everything but the real-time clock. So the only way you can be woken up is by the real-time clock or by an outside interrupt, you know, an outside physical uh, transition change on a pin that will wake you up. Now the other thing though about deep sleep that isn't that great is, and this is different from most microcontrollers or systems on a chip, is the only way to, when you get out of deep sleep, you actually have to reset. So deep sleep will start the code over. So if you think of your setup code, it'll start over at your setup code. Now sometimes this is not an issue, but if you have variables where you're saving states or anything like that, you'll lose those variables unless you store them in non-volatile memory. So something to keep in mind. Okay, here is a clip from the data sheet that just shows you some typical current values. So you can see for a small chip, it can actually draw a lot of current when, when it's transmitting. This is only when it's transmitting. Its normal current draw is more like 80 milliamps or around there. You can see at the different sleep modes, you can see by far deep sleep is, uses the least power. It's in the microamp range versus these other two, which are orders of magnitude higher than deep sleep. Another thing I'm going to show in this video too is you can also reduce power consumption by turning down your transmit power. So by default, transmit power is at max, which I think is about 20 dBm. And if your device is actually close to the router or to whatever access point it's communicating with, you may not need the full power setting. So you can actually save a lot of power by tuning your transmit strength. Okay, next let's look at uh, some examples of some of these functions in action, and then let's see what some of their power usage profiles actually look like. Okay, for this example, you know, there's a lot of different ESP8266 modules out there. I'm using the SparkFun thing. And another thing you need to note is when you do deep sleep with ESP8266, you actually have to connect on the uh, spark fun thing it's called the xpd pin to the dtr pin and what this is really is the dtr pin is the reset pin and the xpd pin is really the gpio number 16 pin i find this a little weird and i don't quite know why they did it this way i don't know if, if sleep mode was almost an afterthought and then they added this to the software and that's why you have to hardwire it but you do have to have this hardwire if you want to be able to wake the chip up so for this example, I want you to know that I have, I'm measuring the current draw directly from VCC. And the reason is, is I don't wanna go through the regulator because the regulator, you know, is not gonna be ideal. So it's gonna dissipate some power. Another thing is, is we're not gonna see the lowest power draw of the chip simply because 
on the thing board, there's a serial programmer, there's a temp sensor, a light sensor. So all those use some power or some current. Now there's actually a power LED and I actually broke it. So that will be subtracted out. There's about 13 milliamps overhead of current that we're gonna see when I make these measurements on the thing board. Okay, let's look at the code for the first example. Okay, for this first example, I'm gonna show the modem sleep as well as the deep sleep. And for this example, I'm not doing anything Wi-Fi wise. So I'm not connecting or sending data. I'm just showing you the sleep modes. So here's my simple sketch. I do need this library here for, for some of the function calls I'm gonna make for, for power saving. I have an LED that I'm gonna flash and then I use this variable for my sleep timing, which I go into deep sleep for five seconds. I set up my LED for output, my LED pin I should say. Then I have this function that's just flashy LED and all this function does is delay for a second and a half. Well actually it turns the LED on, delays for a second and a half, turns the LED off, delays for a second and a half. From there, I do a force sleep. So I do, here I do Wi-Fi dot force sleep begin, which is gonna turn the RF off. So what happens is we come up we flash the LEDs, we delay for a while, then we turn the RF section, which was modem sleep, if you remember. Then we flash the LEDs again. Then I force it to wake up from modem sleep. I say, hey, wake up from modem sleep, turn the RF back on. Then I flash the LEDs again. Then I go into deep sleep for five seconds. So this is in microseconds, so I multiply five by a million. Also, I'll point out deep sleep has some other settings that I have grayed out. But one of the settings is wake RF disabled. And this essentially means wake up and be in modem sleep. So if you do this right here, you'll wake up in modem sleep. These other ones I'm not gonna go into. I mean, if you put in this one, wake RF default, it just basically wakes up like normal. Then my loop, I do nothing and then uh, this is my function for the uh, LED. Now remember, every time I go to deep sleep, when I wake up, I'm just starting over in the code. It's like a reset of the chip. Okay, with that quick overview of the code, let's look at the output current profile using these two different sleep modes. Okay, before I show the current profile, I wanted to show this setup again because what I'm doing is using a power supply that has very accurate current measurements to characterize the current profile of the device. And that's what you actually see in the background of this picture. Well, at least part of it you can see. So here is a screenshot from that instrument that it's connected to. So what we're seeing here is we're seeing an initial turn on. We're seeing some RF activity, but nothing really happens as far as connection or transmit of data. Uh, so wait, let me actually explain this a little better. So what's happening here is we're actually here in deep sleep down here. So down here we're seeing about, I don't know, 13 milliamps. And that's just because of the overhead power. We should actually see about 10 microamps from the ESP8266. The device then first turns on. Notice when it first turns on, there is actually a surge of power as the RF module comes online. It then does some transmit activity, but nothing happens here because I'm not connecting or receiving data from anything. If you notice here, there's a this, this side is a little higher than this side. That's just because the LED is on here and it's off here. Then see what happens here is I turn off the transmitter. So this is here, we're in modem sleep. So if you look at my markers, M1, M1's at about almost 90 milliamps. M2, and you can see here's where the LED is on, here's where it's off, here's where it's off, and we're in modem sleep. M2 is at, at about, I don't know, 28 milliamps. Then, the, then I turn the RF modem back on and notice that we don't have the initial surge when the chip first starts up, but we still have that transmit activity. Then once again, the chip goes to sleep and we're back in deep sleep mode. So you can kind of get a picture or feel for what the current looks like in these different or the magnitude of the differences in current with these different sleep modes. Modem sleep, deep sleep, LED on, you know, LED off, you know, what does the transmits look like when you're not connected, so on and so forth. Now let's look at a second example. Okay, this example I actually leveraged from my video on Android Arduino in the cloud. So 
I'm not going to go over all this code, but basically I showed how to create an Android app to get data from the cloud from your Arduino Maker 1000 and your ESP8266. So I leveraged that code and instead of just looping and sending data to the cloud every so often, I'm going, I'm sending data to the cloud, then I'm going into sleep mode and then I'm waking up and doing it again. When I say sleep mode, I'm going to say deep sleep mode. But what I also do in this example is, in one example I have the transmit power at full strength and then I have it again at zero dBm. So you can see the different differences between those two currents. Now, both these code examples will be on my blog so you can check them out. So here in the setup code, I do my thing, I send data to the cloud, I then go into deep sleep and notice there's no code in the loop because I'm going into deep sleep I think I do 15 seconds and then what happens is it resets and I post to the cloud again. Now if I go into my connect to Wi-Fi function where I do all my Wi-Fi connection stuff, notice here is where I actually set the power level of the, the transmitter. So I ran this once with this commented out and it again like you see now with it not commented out. So let's see what the result is from a current profile from doing it with the transmitter up as well as the transmitter down. Okay, here we're looking at two different transmit profiles, one with about 20 dBm and one with 0 dBm. What happens is between these you're seeing the, the device in deep sleep and so then it turns on after deep sleep you see that initial current spike then you see some transmit activity and communication activity with the router at my house. Uh, you can see M1, at M1, the LED, notice the LED is being flashed here. That's why you're seeing sort of this up and down over here. But at M1, we see about, I don't know, 83 milliamps, which is close to the 90 milliamps we saw earlier. But notice here these transmit pulses are much higher on the left than they are on the right. And, and I should mention that the measurement aperture for these is about 500 microseconds. That's why these pulses are all different sizes because they're very quick and the measurement might not be picking the whole pulse up or it might be averaging over a little bit of the pulse. That's why you're seeing different sizes. But the reality is, is here you're seeing transmit pulses that use a lot more current than these. Here you still have the initial transmit current and you can actually see this initial transmit current or uh, startup current is pretty high because this is about 50 milliamps so we have 50, 100, 150, 200, about 250 even higher of course we're going to subtract 13 milliamps because that's our overhead current but we're still at about 250 milliamps peak that doesn't last for a long time but that's you know a lot of peak current for a small device here on the left we can clearly see, I should say here on the right, we can clearly see the power save advantages using turning down the transmit power. One thing though I want to caution though is if you're too far away and you turn down the transmit power you may have a lot of transmits because data didn't arrive or you didn't get the reply. So there might be a lot more handshakes and data transfers because it's hard to actually get things there because your power settings too low. So it's, it's definitely a balance. Okay, that's it for reducing power consumption on the Arduino enabled ESP8266. Next, I'm going to do one on the Arduino Maker 1000. We're going to look at how to reduce power on that. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel because I have great videos like this coming out all the time. If you have anything to add, anything I missed that can help the viewers, please add it in the comment section. Thank you for watching.